Los Angeles, New York, face to face, Roy, Roy Jones, American <laughs> media. It's old hat for you these days, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. What can I say? You know, uh, getting old, joining the old man's club myself. You know, people going on about why am I picking on old guys? You know, they always see Hopkins last time and now Roy Jones. But hey, I think it's only just in the two years between us. So, uh, you know, I'm joining the old man's club. But on a serious note, you know, uh, Roy Jones Jr., you know, I've always been like a fan, you know, admirer of, uh, of him since since the amateur days, since he got ripped off in the Olympics. And sure. I've always followed his career. And it, as you know, there's always been times when they said we may fight, we may not fight, but hey, you know, fi finally it's arrived. When do you think was the first time that that, that, that was mentioned? When, when, when do you think it was um, first mentioned? Either seriously or not seriously? When do you think it sure, may, Maybe back, you know, when I was champion for two or three years. So 99, 2000, something yeah, like that? Yeah, something like that. There was mentions of it, obviously, as you know, there was mentions of Hopkins around yeah. the same time. Yeah. And uh, ironically, you know, ironically, I it waited so, like, what? Eight years later, and you fight Hopkins, and then the next fight is going to be Roy <laughs> Jones. So the two guys that he wanted years ago. So oh, hey, listen, I'm happy. I'm going to pay a lot more money <laughs> to fight him now than I was eight years ago, and uh, I think he slowed a bit as well, which is good for me. <laughs> but uh, on a serious note, he's still good. You know, I watched uh, I watched him fight against obviously Tito Trinidad, and obviously mm. he was a smaller guy, but you know he's still sharp. You know he's still uh, is powerful. You know, I've seen the fights before that, he still look good. So I think, you know, maybe it's, it's, it's back to back defeats with a lot to do with coming down from heavyweight, crashing his body back down to like heavyweight. Do you think that was a mad decision of his to go up to heavyweight and fight a big heavyweight, Ruiz? You, you can't runner. say it's a mad decision. The guy's a four weight world champion. You know, at the end, of the, in the first person in 100 years to win middleweight, light heavyweight, and go all the way up to, uh, to heavyweight, you know? Mm -hmm. um, whether the decision to come back to light heavyweight and lose. 30 odd pounds to fight Tarver. Yeah. Now that's a question you have to ask him. Maybe that was a mistake. Yeah. Maybe with a big buck staying up. Should have stayed heavyweight. heavyweight. Maybe, but you know, regardless, you know, he's he's in great shape for his age. And I honestly think you know styles make fights, and I think this is going to be a great fight. Now, when you've been with him on this tour, and when you travelled with him, you've been in cabs with him, you've been on planes with him, you spent more time with him than you spend with most people the last few days. Um, are you seeing a different side to Roy? Are you seeing a businessman? What sort of guy are you seeing? What kind yeah, of guy is he? Listen, at the end of the day, you know, we, we, we've got over seven weeks to the fight. So we ain't got to fight that on at the <laughs> moment. But, you know, Roy, Roy ain't got to go talking and saying what he's going to do like Hopkins. You know, Hopkins, <laughs> Hopkins talked a good fight. But on a fight night, you just want to hold. You just want to hold and hug me, and then you think he didn't do was kiss me. But you're still smiling when you talk about Hopkins. You're still yeah, sort of got well, a smile. He is a face. character, man. What can I say? The guy's a character. You know? Quiet sort of opening. Oh, good right hand! And Hopkins has put Calzani down in the very first round. Oh, even when he put me on, the, even when I got caught in the first round. Yeah. I went after him. Yeah. He didn't. He still went backwards. So, <laughs> you know, that I, I don't understand that way you're thinking. But with Roy Jones, he's an entertainer. He likes to entertain. Likes to fight. Doesn't hold. I don't hold. You know, we both we both fast. And the thing in this fight, you know, Roy Jones is going to be the quickest fight I've ever been in the ring with. But I'm going to be the quickest fight Roy Jones has ever been in the ring with. And the winner of this fight is the one who's going to adapt to the other's style best. Now, after all your fights, Joe, all your defenses. You became, in my opinion, a different man after that Jeff Lacey fight. Have you felt like a different fighter since then? You feel like that was it? You proved all you got to prove. Yeah, listen, I started enjoying my boxing again. You know the way it is, as you know, with boxing. You know the boxers can't decide mostly who he fights. In, in the most case scenario, when you got a manager and your promoter, or when your promoter is your manager, also you you don't really got much to say in in, in who you fight. There's not you know not much options. So that's the only reason, eight years to get a unification fight. And I've beaten six former world champions, so what does that say? They just lost their title, and I end up beating them just after they've lost their title, so I've got nothing to gain. So I've had the WBO championship for all them years, and to be honest, the same question was being asked at the press conferences, Joe, when are you going to get a unification fight? Everybody else was getting unification fights, but obviously as soon as I got the Jeff Lacey fight, you know, that, and I'm winning that and just lifting another belt, you know, obviously I'm proud of the WBO title, but to, to lift the IBF title up at the time, mm -hmm. then I thought, I want some more of this. And then obviously Kester came along, and yeah, I had a bug for it then. You know, this is good. You know, this is great to prepare <laughs> and, and challenges, big, big challenges. So, you know, it's great to take, you know, like now take control, take control of my career and, and do what I want to do, what I deserve. Do you think five or six years ago, looking back, would you have liked to have, let's say, got Sven Ockie out of your hair? I know that he's a, I know that he's horrible to watch, but he was unbeaten for a long time. He was champion for a long time. Do you think, looking back, that it would have been nice to have got him out of the way if you could have? Of course, you know, of course it would have been. Um, you know, I, I was pretty peed off with Ockie because what was happening? He was he was fighting, 
he was fighting fighters like Charles Brewer. Beat Charles Brewer on a, on a disputed decision. Then I fight Charles Brewer next Smashing. with no title. Byron Mitchell, another one. Yeah. He beats him for the title. Then I have to fight the guy who's dangerous with no title. And obviously that's when I went down for the first time in my career. Mm -hmm. Got back at my one, as you know, that night in Cardiff. Great night. So frustrating, but hey, Sven Ocker's an intelligent man. And mm -hmm. he, knew he, you know, he knew that if he fought me, he'd get knocked out. Simple as that. So this last year, Kessler, 50,000 people, all that fantastic Hopkins stuff before Christmas at the Ricky Hatton fight, and then the build-up and then in the ring with Hopkins. And now another, a really big fight. I mean, it's been a great year for you, hasn't it? Of course. This is a great year, you know, what can I say, Roy Jones Jr., you know, I, I planned this to be my last fight, and what a, what a way to finish off against Roy Jones Jr., who to me is probably one of the best, if not the best fighters in the last 20 years, um, one of the best fighters of all time, uh, four-weight world champion, at the fight in Madison Square Garden, Mecca Boxing, where all the greats have fought, what a way to finish off. And will it be your last fight? Are yeah, you, I mean, I know it's that a million dollar question. Right? No, it is, it was it is. Yeah, but to me, it's going to be my last fight, but... The way is, I'm trained at the moment, so I don't want to think about retirement. Gotcha. I'm not planning the retirement parties. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I feel that if I go out the way that I want to go out, like every fighter wants to go out, on top, a Big winner, fight. and fighting a great fight, yeah. then um, that'd be cool. Now, a lot of people are confused by the stuff that was in your book when you said you wouldn't fight Roy, or you didn't want to fight Roy. Was that, just explain that. How did that come about? Clear up that little mystery. Uh, yeah, well, basically, you know, two years ago, I was one of the many people that said Roy Jones would call it a day. You know, he went from being Superman <laughs> to getting knocked out by a guy called Tarver and then Glenn Johnson. And I was one who thought, you know, Roy should pack it in. But since then, like all great fighters do, he, he's... He, you know, he's come back and he's, and he's had some good wins mm -hmm. and he's looked sharp and he's looked good and impressive doing it so at the end of the day you know Roy Jones is back you couldn't walk away after beating Roy Jones at Madison Square Garden could you all those Italian Americans you couldn't walk away well, Roy Jones well, that's the fight you know at the Pavlik. end of the day Pavlik everyone wants your Pavlik. fight Pavlik. Talking, everybody's talking about Pavlik hey but listen you know Hopkins could do something there you know we never know I think well, I think I think Pavlik is overrated, mainly because there's no stars in America. Boxing's on a decline, as you've seen by the Olympic team <laughs> with one bronze medal. And a so they, they're, like inventing a, they're inventing a star, you know. So Pavlik is one fighter, but one thing he seems to forget, that he was offered the fight after Lacey, and he declined. Mm. And we also offered him the fight after he beat Jermaine Taylor. And he didn't want to fight. So it's, it's, what is, it's sort of, you know... Makes me laugh how suddenly you fight Roy Jones and he's mouthing off saying I've been chasing Karzai for years, which is complete, <laughs> complete rubbish. And even after he beat Gary Lockett, which I love Gary, yeah, of course. but you know, shouldn't have been really, you know, yeah. in the same, obviously, different class of fighter there. And you know, um, so uh, even after that, he didn't call me out. If you remember, he didn't say, hey, I want to fight Karzai next. They, they said, what about Karzai? He goes, well, well, you know, Joe's a great fight. <laughs> Ask my team. I'll fight whoever they put in front. So all of a sudden, he says, I don't want the Calzaghi for years. So, well, you know, at the end of the day, the way, with the way you look at boxing, the business. And, you know, I've, I've struggled 11 years of world champion to get where I am today. So I deserve to get the biggest fights for what's best for me. You know, because at the end of the day, it's not just about winning. It's, it's about securing my, my family, you know, for future, financially, my kids. And that's, that's what it's all about now. You know, it's, I've, I've, I'm content. Whatever I ever do in my, the rest of my career, Done. I'm proud of what I achieved. You know, the Kessler fight, the Lacey fight, winning them titles, beating Hopkins is, you know, is beyond my wildest dreams. You know when I turned pro, yeah. but see, I was, you know, how confident I was. But if he said, like, listen, man, when you're an old man at 37, you can be on your biggest fights, I wouldn't have believed it. Because I remember telling you I was going to retire when I'm 30, so. <laughs> yeah, you but know. you're a young 36, I'm, I'm a pretty young 36. So I take pride in uh, not looking like a fighter. So yeah. I, want to, I want to make sure I go out the box and not looking like a fighter. <laughs> looking, not looking That's the home. reason I don't want to keep on going. If you're talking about fight, beating Marciano's record, I work out, listen, that means I got boxed twice a year. That means I'm going to be 40 odd the time I've beat this record. I've got a flat nose, <laughs> sorry for our years. I might have more millions in the bank, but hey, get the money. I just uh, I want to stay, keep my looks and everything intact and get out at the top.